Hello everyone, and welcome back to Zoo Tycoon 2 and the Wild Safari Zone. That's right guys, we are back! Oh my gosh, it has been so long since I have seen those elephant rumps. Oh, this is gonna be so exciting! But yes, with the announcement of Planet Zoo coming out sometime in the next few months, I was just really missing the Zoo Tycoon of my heart, Zoo Tycoon 2, and I thought what better time than now to come back and remember everything that it had to offer so that we can think about what the future may hold with Planet Zoo and all of the different features that it keeps hinting at. And what better way to really challenge Zoo Tycoon 2 and to do something new than rather than have a zoo, we actually have, my friends, a safari zone! Look at this place! Isn't it beautiful? African daisies as far as the eye can see. A beautiful savanna with a little river that is actually slightly dried up at the moment, but we'll be talking about how we'll have rainy seasons, we will have dry seasons, and we will have migrations of different animals in this safari. But I should give you a bit of background. So my friends, you are actually my wonderful assistants and you have come to help me run this safari park. This is a special rewilding space. For a time, it was completely blocked off and almost bulldozed to the ground so that it could become a ski resort, which would be quite tragic because Sun Mountain here, which is what this lovely mountain in the middle is known as, is quite the special natural construction. Just look at how beautiful it is. And people claim that it looks like a sun from above, a sun that kind of just has this warmth that radiates out and creates this beautiful safari. So this place almost became a ski resort, but it was bought up by our wonderful, uh, our wonderful establishment, our wildlife, our wildlife corporation that we represent. And you and I are going to be here as researchers in this itty bitty teeny tiny little living space right over here. We're all going to have to pack in. It's probably going to be pretty crowded. I hope all of you will thoughtfully share the space with everyone else. We might have to take turns with the bunks. We'll have to see. But this is our little research station. So that the research station is literally the only thing built here right now. And otherwise, we have just fenced off the area of the safari to protect, or I should say the savanna really, to protect the wildlife from the people who will be visiting. And the people will have to put up with, their, their job is just to stay over here. We'll talk about that in just a second. And our job is going to be adding in new animals to rewild this area with plants, with flora, with fauna, with being able to see meerkats and herds of zebra, adding in hippos and lions, wild dog packs, and seeing how they all interact together. Will they be able to find a balance and kind of live in some, some balanced ecosystem? Will we have to really step in quite often and make sure that certain species populations don't go extinct because they're being eaten by the others? Will the others simply not hunt some of the species they need? What's this? Fam, oh, and we also will have to take on all sorts of different, oh my gosh. <laughs> and we'll also have to take on all sorts of different challenges as part of running this wildlife rescue in order to see if we can attract people to our area and make sure that we can get their donations and their money to keep this place safe and secure. If we want to keep the fences up and the animals safe, then we need to keep the money coming in after all. That is unfortunately one of the ways that the world works. So every now and then we will actually have opportunities to dabble with animals who are outside of the usual scope of our safari savanna, like a dodo bird and a satharium family and a bush antler deer family. Uh, then we can make really cool billboards to attract families to our zoo. We're actually gonna turn this down because we are not in a place where we could do something like that. But in the future, we will actually have little spots over here, the area that is not part of the savanna and that is just kind of fenced in, you could say. We're fencing the people in, not the animals in this case. Uh, we might occasionally have rotating exhibits over here that will house animals that would not normally be seen in this area. If we get sent an animal who is an orphan and needs to be protected and watched over, then we can easily help them out by having a little temporary 
temporary zone to delight the guest with something exotic before they jump into a Jeep tour that I hope we can have stretching around the entire area and really giving people a sense of how beautiful this safari could be. Uh, so that's gonna be our goal. I'm really excited. We're actually gonna spend more time watching the different populations of animals interact, naming them, studying them, seeing how they behave with one another in Zoo Tycoon 2. Then we are worrying about the guest. They're just kind of gonna be over here to help provide the funds to make sure that we can take care of the animals. So this should be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, when we will be rewilding, you will actually notice that we will start adding in different animal habitat items as well. So we're going to be rewilding this area by spending the grants that we have in our company. Uh, I guess I should just say like in our wildlife research. Yeah, that's spending our wildlife research grants to welcome in new tropical savanna animals. It is not the cheapest, like to get the grant for a hippopotamus, for instance, we would need $7,500. And we would need to also make sure that they had new grasses that we planted to eat, that they potentially realized they could eat some of the, uh, the hay grass around the area. We would also need to make sure that they could potentially have some enrichment items like a scratching post to represent like an old tree stump and we might want to provide a shelter normally they would just stay in the water so it'd be kind of cool if we could see if, like the hippo could just stay in the water and we want to make sure that they had plenty of the plants and the rocks and all of the other habitat items that were bulldozed from this land in order to try to make room for a ski resort as we mentioned before so we want to add those in here too but this is going to be so much fun i am really really looking forward to this so let's actually take a look at the different animals that we might be able to choose to spend our grant money on and add into the zone the roan antelope the south southern carmine bee eater the african civet nile crocodile african bush elephant the mossy eye giraffe and the reticulated giraffe which i would love oh my gosh the giant sable antelope, who has beautiful, beautiful antlers, by the way. The African buffalo, who would prove an extremely important part of a lion family diet, because we could add in the lion, the African lions. We also have the gray crowned crane. We have the common eland, the bat-eared fox, the hippo, of course, banded mongoose, who are really, really adorable and love termite mounds, so it'd be really fun to see them. Ostriches rhinos of multiple types white rhino and black rhino we could indeed add some domestic pigs if we were going to say perhaps a herd of them would get loose in the area uh, we also have the uh, the several we also have the warthog wildebeest very important animals who would serve as part of the population of prey items we've also got the water buck the plain zebra and the African wild dog. And those are just a few of the animals that we might be able to spend our grant money and reintroduce to our safari. And I'm so excited because this is also going to be an organic safari, my friends. As the seasons go on, as the sun waxes through the sky, we will actually go through a rainy season and a dry season. So we're kind of in a little bit of a dry season right now where the river is just a little stretch. It's starting to kind of dry up in patches, just provide a few spots where there are watering holes. But in the rainy season, the river will really fill up. There might be new pockets of like little waterfalls running down that sun mountain. We might find new watering holes that will pop up everywhere. We might even find that uh, some hippos might wander in with the big gigantic watering holes expanding since a male hippo will rule over one of his watering holes and try to defend it from the other males. And the bigger your watering hole, the more interesting you are to the female hippos. So it's gonna be really cool because as the seasons go by, we will actually have a random generator that I will be rolling in the back to see if we have a special migration of different animals that manage to make it in through the fences of our safari and if there's any kind of special events that might happen. But overall, we're just going to try to follow different species and different family groups and see what happens with them. So it's gonna be really cool. But all right, so, oh my gosh, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. We're gonna add 
add in some of the new animals. So let's go ahead and add in some really simple animals just to kind of get us started. Uh, we do want to make sure that we keep an eye on our funds as well because we do need to have people start showing up at our zoo if we want to make the money that we need to keep this place going. But let's add in some prey animals to begin with so that they can start kind of spreading their population out a little bit and we can hopefully start seeing um, you know, a good prey population. We're going to try to make it so that we get to the point where when we add in lions, for example, they could actually focus on hunting from the native populations of animals and we wouldn't have to supplement their diet too much. So this is going to be very, very interesting indeed. Uh, oh, and it might be interesting to see, I guess we do need some zookeepers to act and they can be named after you guys. <gasps> That'd be so fun. But we do need some zookeepers who could come in and they could actually act as researchers to scoop the scat and things like that which are not like the fanciest job in the world but scat research is actually one of the more important parts of things that you could do when researching animals in the wild my friends so this is gonna be really cool I'm really looking forward to it I'm not even sure who to add in first this is so exciting oh, maybe some zebra I think some zebra would be a really good start and definitely some birds so let's actually get and these won't again won't be the only animals we add in Let's take a quick look. Like we might have all sorts of storks. We might have quite a few odd animals who have escaped from some local, uh, some local people who had exotic animals they shouldn't. <laughs> but we might have quite a few odd animals start showing up. Ooh, the bongo is normally more for a tropical area, but we might have a couple of them pop by. Capybara, no, capybara wouldn't be in Africa, but it would be cool to have them in a little exhibit just because maybe a cassowary in an exhibit for a little while just because we might be able to make little spots where we could study some of the mouse deer or the chameleons. You do have some chameleons, um, in some of the more bushy parts of Africa. So we might be able to pull that off with a little bit of work. Cockatoos might fly by. They, we may not pick, and always because we have kind of a limited selection, animals that you would only expect to see in Africa, but it's gonna be really fun. <gasps> the long-tailed ground roller, oh my gosh. Greater crested grebe. We have so many to pick from, so many to pick from. Oh my goodness. This is gonna be awesome. I forgot how many like hundreds of animals we have. This is really cool. But let's go ahead and begin by adding in some basic animals and seeing how they do. So let's add in some bee eaters because these little guys love, love, love to eat insects. And building a healthy and viable ecosystem here should involve adding in a few insects, if you ask me. So let's go ahead and we'll spend some of our grant money at inviting in some new insects to the area. The little bee eaters will probably need to stay near a water source as well. For enrichment, we might throw out some of these toy balls and say they're just like a bunch of berries or nuts that they can find. They don't really need a shelter. We might give them a couple rocks. <laughs> we could spend a little bit of our grant money moving in these special rocks, why not? And then we'll get, let's have a population of like Oh, they're so tiny! Oh my gosh! <laughs> let's have a flock of, let's say, uh, six females and six males, and we'll just start there. One, two, three, four, five, six females. And then we'll see if they, one, two, three, four, five, six, we'll see if their population starts spreading, but there's our very first, our very first edition! Oh my gosh, look how cute they are. Hello, little ones. Hi. Yay, all right, and they're headed straight for the insects, which is really good to see. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, they're so pretty. Oh, they're so pretty. They really, oh my gosh. I forgot how beautiful they would be. They're really enjoying all of these little bugs. It's like they they have their own little termite mound. In fact, do we have termite mounds? Can we can we decorate with termite mounds? Is that a thing? I'm pretty sure that could be a thing. Okay, those are savanna rocks. Let's look at some of the scenery. So do we have any termite mounds? Let's see. Safari theme. What the heck? No, I don't want donation boxes. Oh, the safari fountain. <gasps> that would be kind of cool to have at the like center where we can welcome everybody with a big safari fountain. Like, welcome, welcome to our wonderful wild safari. 
Oh yay, and the research on the small toy balls. Oop. The Axel Charitable Foundation has declared your zoo eligible for their matching funds program, which helps out new or smaller zoos. If you can raise more than 1,500 in donations during the next 30 days, oh, the foundation will contribute equally. That is so cool. Yay. All right, we'll try to do that. Let's throw down some of these purple like fruit that the little bee eaters can enjoy. Oh, this is so cool. So they're going to kind of hang out anywhere that they can go ahead and eat some of the um, eat some of the bugs. So I wonder, do we have something that could represent termite mounds? I am so curious about that. Let's see. Maybe a decoration piece. Oh, <gasps> stalactite formation. Close enough. Close enough, if you ask me. That looks kind of like what you would expect a termite mound to. So let's do some research on the stalactite formation. And then, do I have any? We have savanna burrows. Ooh, these are really nice. Yeah, I could definitely see something going into the savanna burrow. So let's put down a couple of those. And we'll imagine that's kind of where the insects are going. And no doubt we can have like a couple piles of hay that might make a bed for somebody over here. This is going to be so cool to kind of set everything up and just see who uses what and how it all gets laid out. But oh, look at the tiny little ones. Oh, they're so cute, guys. Okay, well, at least we have a good start there. Uh, do we have anybody coming in? Yay! And people are starting to arrive, so hopefully we can fleece them for their donations without too much of an issue. And pretty soon, we're gonna have to go ahead and add in some fencing, or some gates, I should say, on our fencing, so that you guys can actually come in as zookeepers and help to keep an eye on how all of the populations are doing and to monitor the research, which is gonna be really fun. Oh my gosh, it's beginning! It is beginning! But all right, guys! With a small little flock of birds who has flown in, we have begun our efforts to uh, repopulate and rewild the Sun Mountain Wild Safari Zone. And I'm really looking forward. Yes, research is complete on the stalagmite formation. It kinda looks like termite mounds. That is so cool. So we can throw it down and call it termite mounds. Can I rename it even? African daisies. <gasps> I cannot rename it. But that would have been really cool. We know those are termite mounds, not stalactites. <laughs> but all right, thank you guys so much for joining me. If you could, do please leave a like uh, to toss a treat, I suppose, some insects to our little bee eaters. If you would like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures, do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, guys, stay curious and get ready to help out. You guys are gonna become our zookeepers, or I should say, <clears throat> our safari researchers watching this world come to life. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.